is so cool. So this is Taco Tuesday Girl. Hey, I know her. Yeah. Um. This is not boring. Um. I agree with that. Um. My long form unedited conversation. I love it. Yeah. Did you did you see any of the clips with uh, Jeremy Fragrance by chance? No. But I love he, him. Yeah, he did the. Wait, no, I did. did I did see. Did I? I I feel like I did see a clip of him. Wait, what what happened with Jeremy? It was just so funny at like 38 minutes probably. He was like, we're like middle, mid conversation. He's like, okay, are we done? <laughs> he's like, how long does this go? And we're like, I mean, you can leave if like, if you want. Normally it's an hour. And he's like, ah. Oh, he uh. does, ah? Uh, <laughs> like, uh. I mean, he, he, I don't think he like explicitly went, ah. Uh, yeah. But he definitely was like, he was ready to be done. Right. I don't think he's ever done an actual podcast before. No, he had no or, he's or a listened to one. He he's really also is German, right? Yeah, he's yeah. one of the most he's, famous. He's one of the Germans. most famous. Yeah, uh, that's that's in the clip I saw. <laughs> yeah. that's, Are you like? Are you famous in Germany? He's like, yes. Very I am. Much. I am the most famous. <laughs> yeah, that's not really his accent. But yeah, we were and bad at it. All of the comments are like, "No, he's not. I'm German, and <laughs> no, he's not. Definitely not true." <laughs> he's like, "I cannot walk down the street." You know that the viral song from uh, the company that you fake invested in. Uh, what, or, no, that's beers? a different guy. Different guy. Different guy. That's not actually. He's not a Friday beers guy. The different guy. The the Euro beat song. I thought he's in Friday beers. He's not. The Euro, the Euro beat song that went viral on Twitter. What would sing it? Like f- what? So how does it go? It's, it's, it went viral on Twitter. And I don't know. I deleted Twitter. The, First of all, it's not Twitter. Really? It's X. Thank you very the much. The Euro. Uh, this had it had like hundred forty million views. I actually deleted it um, off my phone, and it's my, okay. Like, no, no, no. Never uh, been you better. just want to sing it now? So sing it, please. Okay, sure. Um, uh, 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 can you close your eyes, please? Because you're staring at me a lot. Was that a vocal uh, exercise? Uh, or are you I, up shut box? up when okay. I'm trying to all do right. it. All right, go ahead. Uh, all of the thing, how does it mean when the rhythm... If you haven't gotten it by now... Oh, no. <laughs> I don't have it. Wait, wait, but what about him? This is, there's no point in bringing it up anymore. <laughs> Wait, what about the song? If I say, if I say, if I say, hey, did you ever see Transformers? And you go, no. Then I'm not going to tell you about how his name is the same name I use on eBay. I'm not going to say that because you didn't see the movie. Jeremy Fragrance's name? No, nice. dude, I'm so, so lost. lost. I am so lost. You're so lost. You're so out I of mean, touch. So far, you've been the worst podcast guest that we've had on this show in history, yet? and it's only Are we three. Done yet? How long do we go? It's only three minutes in, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Today we have my arch nemesis and. Um, it's kind of soul sister. We're kind of we like, you know, we like lookalikes. <laughs> and now he's giving me the silent treatment. Good. His name is Ludwig. That's all I get. And he's here. What lookalike? <laughs> yeah, you probably introduced. I just said Jared. my arch nemesis. That's pretty. That's pretty damn good. That means my whole life revolves around you. S- streamer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Cody, for finally decorated streamer for finally inviting me on streamer of the year. <laughs> Sorry, that's why I said decorated. You know that implied it. I had a decor. It's a big decoration. <laughs> okay, it would up your environment score in The Sims a lot. Uh, hello, I'm I'm happy to settle the score here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. are we gonna squash this or what? I I would like to. It's a little tense in uh, here yeah. right now. Is this is this real? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't think it was. <laughs> Neither did I until I see. But it a, seems kind of real. A Cody and Co video. Okay. Right, and that. But by, by, by the way, you started this. By the by, let's 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 inundate people. What what happened in your view? In your warped little view? Someone sent me a video, and all it was was you being like, "Okay, I'm gonna have to make up some internet beef right now." Oh, Cody Co. Fuck him, and then you just listed real reasons why you don't like me. <laughs> so it was supposed to be fake. Uh huh. But then you, it was actually genuinely insulting. Can I tell you something very no, vulnerable? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> She's like, oh. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. You, you. But so- I pretended it was for my response video. Yes. And your response. Some people took it seriously. I know. They took it because I read the comments and I'm like, I don't know if this is real or not. And my insult would be like, I hate that he ran a marathon. <laughs> and they'd be like, is this a real beef? Um, I want you to know something. That that accidental stream moment, all contrived. Really. From the start, the whole thing. Really? So I, you knew from the get-go that you were going to call me out, and that's the way you were going to do it? The moment I saw the mods accidentally put a third option, which I didn't do, I was like, ooh, 
I do have an idea here, <laughs> and it's Cody Co. It's Cody Cody See, Corporation. That's why you're streamer of the year, right there. You know, you people premeditate been, things. People have like been insulting me though. They call me Cody Costco. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Whoever thought of that is. I'm very not bringing good. it up for laughs. I'm bringing it up because it's been hurtful and hard to deal with. You know how hard it is because there's pretty good. There's so many things I want to do, and then Cody's just here, and he's just he's either taking my ideas, which you've done more. Yes. So let's write. Yeah, yeah, I'll admit to that. Let's write. Let's just talk about the beef, okay? Yeah, okay. Because let's we should get this out of the. We should stomp it out. Yeah. Because we're two adults. Yes, and let's give the people context. Cody is a upcoming creator. I streamer of the year. By the way, feel free to cut me off if I say something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, that you know what? That's fine. That's fair. I'll take it's that. It's a real trophy. I can show you it. Oh, what? you're worried about the okay. The up and coming. That I didn't realize that was I'll, here's the thing. I'll think of my words better. You know, to me, I'm always up I like to say humble. So I'm always up and coming in my own mind. So he agrees. Up and coming. And and uh in the first time you'd ever reached out to me, mm -hmm. which then this started all with that simple request from you, was to ask me. A man you'd never talked to before. How to get in contact with someone I'd collabed with? <laughs> that was the first time you reached out to Ludwig. Was that the first? That's the very first thing the, either of us said to each other. Very first thing is I did this collab with a guy named Geo Wizard who played Geo Guesser. He was the preeminent Geo Guesser player still before Rainbolt to this day. He's still a great creator. Great. He does uh, crossing countries in one line. Love the guy. So very wait, often did, did Rainbolt get inspired by him? He got inspired by me doing Rain a collab with him. Really? He said he watched me do a collab with him, the same one that you watched. Okay. And then what he what he did, Rainbow, great guy, is he got into GeoGuessr naturally through the community. What you did is you went right right to me to stack me and go to the top guy <laughs> and you made a video with him, which is actually fine to do. Did I, I didn't say anything before that? Like, hey man, no. like I like your shit? Because I I did. You I don't anymore, but I did. <laughs> You might have hit me with like a shit sandwich, like, yo, dude, love your stuff. Where'd you find Geo Wizard? <laughs> so that's good. The, that's it, fine. It, it was like a sense of urgency. Like you could not locate him and and you needed this video. <laughs> uh so I, I gave you his email because that's how he communicates. Cause he's he's an old school guy. He watches footy matches on the telly and yeah. Yeah. and he does emails. Um and that and that's where it just that's where it spawned. And that was and it was lighthearted. And then he came for my friends. Right? <laughs> because the next Your thing college roommate. Yeah. My friends, I uh, in college, I was in an improv troupe slash stand-up troupe slash sketch comedy troupe, jack of all trades, uh, called <laughs> Tempe Late Night. Okay. Uh, and and Cam, aka Nut, was on this troupe. Yeah. And in fact, he was he was in a sense my like I consider him like kind of my apprentice. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, now you're just making shit up again. Well, this is real because we <laughs> used to I used to do the late night segment. Right. Like we would have a late night desk, very similar okay. to SNL's. Okay. And he took over that role. Gotcha. So it was. So you did kind of take him under your wing, show him the ropes. It, look, now Apprentice has beaten the master. He's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't mean to say that what he is is because of me. Mm -hmm. But I knew him in college. We were friends. I lied. I called him my college roommate in the title because it worked really well. <laughs> and then I see him doing Jubilee videos with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say. I will say that I, I did, you know what, I saw your podcast episode, I thought, oh, so it's possible, same thing with the Geo Wizard thing, I was like, it's possible to reach out to this man. This human and like communicated with. To, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that to me was like, oh, he's down to collab with people. Yes. I'm not going to do a podcast with him because that's, that's what you did. I wouldn't steal that, even right. though I did it. He all. was on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> since then, since then, we... The beef between you and me were was established. Yeah. So it was like a spiteful thing. Okay. Like, no, fuck it. I'm going to do this anyways. Sure. But yeah. at that point, it was like, okay, well, I'll do a reaction video because that's that's fair use. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You do such <laughs> ethical reactions. There's, and I have actually nothing to say about it. There's You're, copyright laws in place. You're arguably the most transformative not in the those business. Laws. Yeah. When you cringe, Thank it's you. like, it's for so long that I forget the video we were watching. And that's <laughs> why I'm so up and coming right now. <laughs> But Cody, there's a third thing. <clears throat> what? And this is the most fucked <laughs> wait, thing. You wait, don't even wait. know about this okay, yet. Okay. You don't know about this yet. Fresh meat. Do you know that I have a peculiar interest in certain cars? I you didn't know that. You don't know about Oh, it? the 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 truck? You've seen this. 
So I, I saw yours. I know yes. you have one, and it got stolen, and then you got it back. There was a whole saga. Uh, I'm not really big into like fancy cars, but I really like Japanese K trucks, which are just small little trucks because I think they're really cute, mm-hmm. and I like pickup trucks because they're like effective yeah. and practical. So I, I bought this K truck. Mean, it's, it's the most impractical pickup truck you could possibly own. It's way more practical than a Ford F350. It has the same bed size. Does it actually? Yes. Okay, sorry. I shouldn't have. You know more than me about K trucks. So I, I should mean, not have... American consumers. Look, has I mean, the brain. fucking the other part of the the cab or whatever is like. Tiny. It's like a little. It's for two. Phone booth. It's for two. Like, it's for two. It's for two. <laughs> <laughs> it's for two people. I didn't get an Instagram. I'm not. I don't got a third on the way yet. It's just for two. That's fine for me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm thinking family cars Which, right now. By the way, congratulations. Because I actually, I, I was, I did this whole rant on my stream, and then I opened Twitter, which you don't even have, and you were trending, and I was like, oh, I was just talking about him, and it's like. <laughs> Cody announces he's having a kid with Kelsey, and I'm like, oh. Wait, were you sitting on me? Yes. <laughs> on your street? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like being like. And then you're like, oh. I'm being you. terrible. I'm being terrible. I'm making fun of anything I can latch onto, and it's like this beautiful post. It's very sweet, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> today, really? He had to pick today. Karma's a bitch. All right, guys. Um, I have a hard one to. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a hard ad to deliver, if you know what I mean. We're going to take another quick break to thank today's sponsor, Blue Chew. Blue Chew can increase your performance in the bedroom. This is great news because you suck in the bedroom. Yeah. I'm kidding. Take Maybe you off. don't, but you could be better probably. You know, with Labor Day weekend coming up, you can spend that extra day off boning. Get that Full ex- day off work. Spend it having sex. What else should you be doing? You should be boning. Ex- yeah. yeah. That's what Labor Day is for, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Laborious sex. Yes, yeah. exactly. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablet. And at a fraction of the cost. The best part is you can take them at any time. In fact, when you take Blue Chew, you'll be entering BCST, which is Blue Chew Standard Time. <laughs> and boinking is the only way out of that time zone. It's officially recognized. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually the best way to combat jet lag. Yeah, right. The, the proce- way out of it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The process is so simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within a few days. And the best part is, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a, in a discreet package. It'll read, not Blue Chew. <laughs> Did you put that in? Yeah. <laughs> Just be on the lookout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll say, not Blue Chew. Definitely not That's the Blue Chew. <laughs> With Blue Chew, men everywhere are excited to see the postman. He'll probably even be bricked up while delivering your package. (laughs) Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it, baby. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code INSANE at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code INSANE to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, but you, on your 300th episode yeah. okay. of the TMG podcast, mm. were surprised with a K-truck. That's not fair, though. That's not. I had nothing to do with that. I had nothing to do with that. You don't, he can, you don't have he can attest. With TMG. Okay. No, 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 no. They surprised. That was a legitimate surprise. I had no idea what was going to. They said, come in early. Mm-hmm. They put me in this studio that the, uh, the you know, the, the ship. Well, I mean, it's up in space. Right. Yeah. Because you have to beam up. So I first, this was the green room. I had to be here. Then they blindfolded me. All the shit you saw in that episode. I know you didn't watch it, but. I, I saw the truck and I just, I became red. You were just fuming. <laughs> I became the color red. <laughs> That's with my fucking truck. Yes. I was like, another thing. Another thing he's taken. Uh, well, and- you know. Like, Noel is the car guy out of yes. the both of us. And so he was the one that also, I guess, has a fascination with Japanese trucks and cars. No beef, Noel. Great guy. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, he didn't steal he your was idea of a truck anyway. He wanted to drive, so he wanted to drive like a race car onto set and it's just onto the ship. It's too, just right. too big to get onto the ship. Yeah, you can't beam that up. But you can't beam up a K truck because it's, it's small. Exactly. With a 660 engine. But it's actually the same seat. bed size as a Ford F350. And that's what people don't get. Yes, that's what people <laughs> that's don't understand. Get. I'm coming you around. But here's the thing. The cab is for dick. The cab is for dick. <laughs> yes. Which is fine if you don't got a third on the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was, that was my third beef. And my final beef is I always thought I would be a collegiate athlete and I wasn't. Okay, well, and that's Cody annoying really that you were. 
Whoa. I'm sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Whoa. That's the most fucked up thing you've ever said. Where did that I didn't come say that. from? The, the beef is squashed. I got beef with you now because of that shit. I don't want to get in between. I feel almost awkward being in between this. <laughs> No, I just like to rag on Cody when I can, but it's, um, you were an athlete. You I'm never athlete. gonna forgive you for that. Diving is a sport. I dedicated 12 years of my fucking life <laughs> to that goddamn sport, just to be like, yeah, you weren't an athlete, and you consider it a sport. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking off. I'm fucking, I quit this podcast. Anyway, I've come to the realization that. As as some of my dissenters would argue, I'm Cody Costco. I'm the Cody Costco who went to live streaming, and you're the Cody Co. Who went to YouTube. You got so much free time. You just you just really ethically react to something, then go off and have a kid, and then and, and go run an Iron Man, which nobody knows what that is or cares. It's a weird. You, you put you, you put the it. emphasis on the wrong part of the Iron, Iron Man. Man. Everyone gets on Iron about Man. This. Everyone gets on Iron Man. About this. Iron Man's the the hero. Iron Man is the race. <laughs> that's actually kind of true no no the hero is iron man <laughs> yeah he's like irish I, iron man iron man <laughs> um but i'm happy to squash it now no no we are very similar i feel Just like i think we have i will i'm getting there yeah, fucking yeah. let me get there yeah, yeah i have to make it dramatic for the show i think we're very similar we have similar senses of humor um see that's what i'm talking about the lip is quivering I'm drawing tears right now. And I, I want to say, I want to tell you that I'm I'm not sorry. I'm not. What? <laughs> what the fuck? I will, I will keep stealing your ideas. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I am sorry for stealing your stuff. <sighs> Even though you said it's fair and the beef is, the beef is squashed now. I think you'll make it one day. Up and coming, baby. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, happy to squash it. I'm happy to squash it. You know, because we're in different sectors <clears throat> too. Yeah. So it's okay. It's okay to to look at me and be inspired by the electricity that I'm creating on Twitch or YouTube or whatever. There you go. Electricity. You would describe it like that, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. And when you said earlier, by the way, that you used to like me, that was like fake, right? Because like, <laughs> what? I grab all that a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? You know that I my best days are behind me. And <laughs> everything I'm creating is redundant and derivative. <laughs> but you, Cody doesn't struggle with that at all. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all, dude. <laughs> not at all. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, I did used to like you. Okay, cool, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, um, so, yeah. Um, I do want to talk about something very important. We, the three of us here, not you, I don't think, but we all recently went to the Eras tour. I went to the Eras tour. That's what I'm saying. Last yes. night. Last night. I, I saw yeah. the Eras tour. Yeah, that's oh, not I was budget. there last night. I was there on Saturday. When did you go? I went on Saturday, which means, uh, yeah, I saw Death by a Thousand Cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, you're on your own, kid. Two great yeah. secret songs, surprise mm -hmm. songs. So you're a uh, Swifty? Uh, by, by association, yeah. Yeah, same. And what did you think of the show? I first thought she's an athlete. Yeah. She's yeah. a fucking athlete, and yeah. not enough people give her credit for that. Not a. I didn't even see a single like hint of fatigue. Mm. The entire. Swear to God, the entire time, it seemed like the last song she had the energy of the first song. I could not tell you what this part of my body is, but directly next to my knee, there's a this part that gets a little fat when I stretch it out. It has been sore since Saturday, and I think I'm concerned about it today because it's yeah. been too many days, <laughs> and it's from standing the whole time. <laughs> and I was tired standing, and I sang half a song, and I was like, "Oof, I'm gonna take a rest." <laughs> and she did the whole thing. I'm impressed. She must sleep 18 hours and then wake up, pop a Vivance, and just get on there and crush. Dude, I I was thinking that I was like, what what is her routine before these shows? She must just have like the like, if I was her, I'd be like massage, spa, like the most relaxing day possible, so that when like the time comes for the energy, like and you can't. I, and you also, can't even before talk. and after the show, I would not talk to a single yeah, person. You can't because all she's, day. She's also signed up for more shows because her America tour is supposed to end. She added more dates to um, uh, the L.A. part. She added Santa Clara dates, and then she's also extending it with a Miami date. Yeah, she's 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 crazy. She's doing eighteen months of touring. She added a billion dollars to the economy. <laughs> One point four billion dollars is what it's going to gross now. And yeah. it, if she adds more, it'll be closer to 2 billion. It's the highest grossing tour of all time and shits on the number two, which is Elton John's last tour, which I think was like 800 million or something like that. Do you know what my thought, second thought was? What? First thought, she's an athlete. Second thought, <clears throat> it is crazy how short-term fame is. Because Elvis was probably selling out similar things 
totally out of the youth's conscious. Nobody under the age of 30 listens to Elvis. And so in our lifetime, that will happen with the 30-year-olds when we're 80 with Taylor Swift. You have been thinking about this a lot about your best days are behind you. It's fleeting. <laughs> and it's a fleeting and, moment yeah, that we yeah, grasp the, onto. It's the like fleetingness of legacies. and We clutch on a sand and the grain continues to fall. Yeah. What? Have you ever tried to hold sand? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's deep. Damn. Uh, I just, I said it. Proverb. I said it. No, I'm actually French. Um, <sighs> it's a French proverb? Yeah, because I said it. I'm French. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, bonjour. Um, Did you really make that up just now? There's no way. Yeah. Yeah, was that a, was that a Ludwig original? I, I, it's so funny that you couldn't imagine someone not taking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, what was your era? Um, what did I dress as? Yeah. So here's the thing. I, I'm not like a Swifty. Kelsey is. So like by association, same thing. So I was like, what era? I didn't even know that was a thing until the day of that I was supposed to dress as an era. So I bought a purple shirt to dress as the purple era, which was. What? What? No, What's no, that's the era that's represented by purple? Maybe. Yeah, mid- speak, now. Speak, speak now. Speak now. Sparks fly. Speak now. All that stuff. Yeah. No. What was the? They well, each speak had a now color. Is the album. Yeah, I know. They each were yeah, represented right. by a color. Yes. Which was the purple one? I don't know. Speak now. Speak, speak now. now. Yes. I was going to dress as Speak Now and I forgot the fucking shirt in the bag. So I was dressed as No Era. No, no. That's not that's not true. I had Cowboys on my shirt. So I was dressed as her country. Debut? Yeah. I was uh I was Valentine's Day. Okay. Which isn't an era cuz that's just a day. It's it, well it's a movie she was in. Oh, okay. <laughs> with uh <laughs> with what's his name? Taylor Lautner. We, ah. we have a picture of this actually. Zach, can we pull up uh, Ludwig's uh, Valentine's outfit? It's me? When you when when, when when they pull this up, I want a gut reaction. Just say like, how does he look? Ew. Jim Shorts. <laughs> okay. Why did you say you? Why did you say <laughs> nice. you? Nice. I am in earshot. Nice. That's why I hired her right there. Yeah. For insults to the <laughs> yeah, guest. To you. Okay. Specifically. You, you hired her yesterday. I. Dude, you look like my friend. This is what my friend Sam would wear to anything. Oh, I thought we were, we were making a huge breakthrough. No. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be right. a weird way of saying that. <laughs> yeah, well. You know what that looks like? <laughs> that looks like a friend. <laughs> yeah, we hug and hate. The beef is officially squashed. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> um, does your friend wear Crocs on Crocs? <laughs> is that a little croc as a what are those called gibbets. snap gibbets. gibbets yeah i knew it was something stupid like that uh, buy, buy crocs <laughs> sorry i'm sponsored are you actually yeah oh that's cool yeah i have to yell buy crocs in every podcast do you have a little gibbet buy crocs i'm I'm getting a couple we'll is that later. part of your deal that you have to yell yeah buy crocs it's seven on every times media appearance you seven do? times seven it, times you will hear it you want to just get them out of the way no, so we don't have to that's or are you gonna contract. surprise me part of the contract you can't stack them okay because then you just <laughs> You'd, you everyone would backload it. Everyone would backload it. And don't stack the buy cross. <laughs> yeah. CTA. Uh, yeah, that's me and Cutie. We're here. I wish somebody, I wish you guys knew Sam because you'd be like, that is a Sam outfit. And no offense to Sam. Well, to be fair, it's Taylor Lautner's outfit. Unless Sam also wears Crocs. So wait, did you have the 13 on the back? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, my friend dresses that too. Yeah. That's funny. It's like you can just buy it on Amazon. It's like a like a quick little... <clears throat> so I, I I rocked out. I was basically, I don't know if you had this similar experience. I felt what like a shaman is on a mushroom trip, but for Cutie to enjoy Taylor Swift to the maximum. Ah, that's a good point. I kind of felt the same a little bit. Like, like a shepherd. Yes. I am meant to make your vibes the best yes. possible. I'm not here to enjoy this. I'm here to enjoy you enjoying this. Yes. <laughs> in fact, I was in my own head not enjoying it. Because I, I would be like, I'm here listening? to enjoy you <laughs> enjoying this. Because like, I know the blank spaces. I know the shake it offs of the world. I mean, I was dancing to 75% of it probably. Yes. Because it was nonstop hits besides a few mellow parts that I didn't know the songs. I do of. not care for her most recent album. Yeah, I don't like folklore that much. Like, That's okay. Ever- no, no. Whoa. No, no, I'm saying that was the softer you, kind of version. Ever, Evermore is, I mean. Evermore, yeah. Whatever yeah. like the Evermore. fairy one. Yeah. You know? Folklore is very good. Like the Folklore, one where she's like. Also, Midnight's is very. Folklore's good. amazing. Betty, <laughs> amazing. The one. Betty, is so good. Yeah. What song is that? You are so detached. <laughs> Fuck you, man. You're not on. I'm up Twitter. And coming. I'm grinding away <laughs> all day, every day, trying to make a name for myself. And it's it's like, why is this a, ch- a specific change? Intentional? 
I think it's a, a fault of mine, to be honest. I, I, sh I could be a little bit more connected to pop culture. Don't hate yourself. Cause it's a fault because maybe it hurts your work, but where is it a pro? It's probably a Well, pop. no, it also hurts. Like it's, it's easier for people to have conversations with people. Yeah. If they know references and older shows and shit like that. Right. Like I was just listening to, I don't mean, you know, take this with, I don't listen to Joe Rogan often, but I was listening to him on the way here because <laughs> his episode with Post Malone, I just, you know, he's a friend. He's a, I'm a fan of his. I like listening to him talk. Post, not does he Joe. always does he always try to bring up that he's friends with Post? Yeah, is that yeah. often? Yeah. Is that, do I? I've never even said that before. Friends with Post, I got it. P P call him Posty or <clears throat> I do like him what he says on podcasts. So I was listening to it and they were just dropping fucking references, you know, to old shows, titles, up Jarvis to movies, Camp Krampus. They're talking about come on, like the old, like the, the other scene. version of Santa Claus, yeah. the evil and one. I'm like, I, I can't do this. You didn't understand the references? No. Mm. But I mean, I could like, you know, I could get what they were inferring, I guess, but I don't have any of my own. What's weird is before the pod, I brought up the incredibly popular Euro dance parody song <laughs> that's taking over the internet uh, made by Kyle Gordon, famed TikToker, and you didn't even get a lick of it. Can you bring that up? It is so massive. I need to, need to see it. Is it, it out on Spotify? It's called... Um, Ah oh, shit! Just look up DJ Crazy Times. It comes out the fifteenth. There's only sneak peeks of it on on Twitter. Probably some reuploads on YouTube. Uh, but it had it had I would argue two hundred million plus. Views. Oh, is this is this the uh, ha, 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 <laughs> that one? I got it's strip, I got strippers tits in my face. Uh huh. That one. Keep going. No, that's you should know it by that line. No, keep going. That's not that one. No, no, it's not that one. Let's let's do it. You know what, listen. which one I'm talking about? Definitely not. Really? That one is taking over TikTok. Ah, yeah. Ah, 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 ah. This is like the sound they make before they say the train is arriving, the <laughs> terminal. <laughs> Does it? I, I have not heard this one, but I'm down to listen to it. This one, yeah, click on the YouTube, the six minute one you had. That one works. That, that link right there, looped. It's like a parody of classic 90s euro dance music like and it's aqua. actually popping off it's it's insane like i think the tweet that that announced it had like three hundred thousand likes 120 million views by the way i know is it is kyle gordon he's not like a musical artist right he's like a short creator guy yeah comedy shorts creator and yeah he's probably fucking stand -up. hilarious yeah it's touring stand-up i think that's he's so funny yeah this is so the, this the this whole is, thing was a sketch yeah it, well it started as a character that's the best line women are my favorite guy it started as a uh a character he had that was DJ Crazy Times, and then he made a song for DJ Crazy Times. Because you'll know this, you're on YouTube. What are YouTubers' biggest videos most of the time? If you ever go by popular, it's like a song they made, mm -hmm. and that's almost always the case. Uh, and so this, you know, it's way easier to make a song go viral than a sketch that requires some level of insane media literacy or whatever. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to make a good song though that people yes. actually like. Yes, but this song bangs. The music video is fire. And the full version comes out next week. We're going to take a short break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, AG1. Listen, guys, AG1 is the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I gave AG1 a try because I was tired of taking so many different pills and vitamins, which is why I was excited to try one single solution supplement that actually tastes good. I drink AG1 in the morning after going out on a run. I love it. I actually do because it makes me feel replenished and ready to take on the rest of my day. I think it tastes great. It's super easy. Yeah. Um, and it just feels good that you just do one thing and then it's like you're, you're covering all your nutritional bases, you know? Saves a lot of time. Um, why take a bunch of different things when you can just mix one scoop of powder and water once a day? AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate your daily routine. My AG1 is delivered to me every month, so it's been super easy to make it a daily habit. I also get the single serving AG1 travel pack so I never have to miss a day. I just mix the powder into ice cold water and drink it first thing each morning after I run and that's it. With AG1, taking good care of my body each day is really that simple. So if you want to try and take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase, then go to drinkag1.com slash chill. That's drinkag1.com slash chill. Check it out. <clears throat> so, well, I mean, I feel like an easy recipe right now for success is just bring back 
shit, like late nineties, early two thousands shit. Well, yeah, it's a way to succeed and massively fail, right? What do you mean? Like there's so much stuff that's been rebooted that doesn't crush. But I feel like the style of Aqua, that's so smart. Yes. Yeah, that's smart. Because you go back and you listen to Aqua, especially now with like the, you know, I'm Barbie girl and shit like that. But you go back and you listen to that style and you're like, no one's doing this. And actually there's an artist I just found. His name's, his name's Hoodie, H-U-D-I. And he does, he's a rapper, but he raps over beats that sound like old like Justin Timberlake beats. Oh yeah. Sort of. <laughs> <You can't really. laughs> this one doesn't really maybe. <laughs> no, I could definitely see JT going like I'm bringing <laughs> sexy back. <laughs> uh yeah, I I think I think I mean this is this goes for fashion, this goes for music, this goes for movies. Everything's kind of circular yeah. in a way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It all comes in style, goes out of style. We're going to go out of style. Yeah, but we're now, how old are you? 27. Yeah. I lied. Okay. I'm a little bit. Okay. I'm still a little bit older than, older than you, but like we're older at the age now. Wait, 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 wait. I'm still a little older than you? What do you think is going to change? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have a really good year this year? <laughs> you said I'm 27, then you said, no, I'm 28. And yeah. I was like, okay, that doesn't oh, make much okay. difference because I'm almost 33. But I know it's fucking embarrassing. But like as a, as millennials. Pause. 30 What? <laughs> I'm having a child, dude. Yeah, that's so cool, though, huh? I'm going to be a dad. Yeah. I might as well be 33. 30, so you're 32? I'm 32. Yeah. Okay. that's. I mean, that's cool. That's really... You're 28? That's hip. That's hip of you. I think it's a cool age. I'm 28, yeah. Well, it's cool because shit that like like shit that's like vintage coming back now is just like when we were kids. It's nostalgia, yeah. Nostalgia yeah, beats but, real. Yeah. What, but so, it's weird, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's 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 like cool. I remember genuinely listening to Aqua as a child, and now people are like bringing it back. Like, holy fuck, look at this ancient shit. What do you yeah. enjoy? Like, what do you listen to? Because you're so, it seems like you're so out of it. Because you're not on, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not in like a, an offensive way, in a healthy way. Because we all delude ourselves by spending time yeah. scrolling through social media that we're keeping in touch. Yeah. With what? A bombing in Kuwait? What does that keep me in touch? <laughs> yeah. With? How does that watching. help? We all delude ourselves. That's what thinking. I like, dude. I watch the news a lot. Do you? No, I don't. So what do you keep up? Like, I what drive do do? a lot. <laughs> really? <laughs> I moved far away and now I spend a lot of time in the car. That's my own fault. So what do you do but in the car? Genuinely though, what I like to do is I like to like train. Like I like to go out and run and that takes up a lot of time. Oh yeah. So then if I'm not doing that, I'm working and I feel like I work a little bit too much right now. So I'm trying to scale back maybe and get more into like surfing and stuff. But like, I, I can't just like toss on an old movie and enjoy myself. You'd feel like you're not being productive? Yeah. I think that's what it is. I have a weird thing with like always having to use up my time productively. Yeah. I Otherwise, think. I'd feel like a loser. That is shared with everyone who's running Iron Man. There's no way you I run Iron Man. I think that's true. Yeah. I think it's like a mental defect. Yes. Are, yeah. So are you someone who stacks it then? Like in the sense that if you're training, you have to run a lot. You got to swim a lot. You got to do whatever. Are you listening yeah. to a podcast or an audio book? Yes, I do. I, Is it like I non-fiction I review my audiobooks? videos before they go up while I'm on the bike. Okay. Because I want to kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Uh, I don't listen to audiobooks. I can't do that. Really? I have to read them. Okay. But I listen to podcasts. So when I'm in the car, I'll listen to something educational because I'll be like, Kate, this puts my mind at ease because I'm not wasting time. I'm learning something. Right. What? Yeah, Joe Rogan. For example, Joe Rogan and Post Malone talking about Krampus. <laughs> right, yeah. No, that's big. You got to learn about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do you think I get my references? <laughs> uh, so are you mostly nonfiction then? Are you mostly like... Yeah, I love nonfiction, but I'm reading a fiction book right now mm-hmm. that's pretty good. What is it? Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's the, the rainbow cover? Yeah. Jill just read, read that too. And what do you think? She loved it. She thought it was so good. I'm not sure. I like 80% like it. I'm not in love with it. I think it's kind of weird. Have you read it? No. Do you read? I do. What are you reading right now? I'm reading, I just finished, uh, I'm reading a boring book about building a city. <laughs> it's okay. like, it's literally called Building a Dream City. Oh, okay. And it's about the things you it's need. It's about line or whatever in Saudi Arabia? No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, it's about building the perfect line. <laughs> yeah, no, have you heard of Yes, okay, yes, yeah, the yeah. Saudi Arabian yeah, line. Yeah. No, it's about like, uh, like what you need for an effective city with, you know. That's awesome. A walkable city. Yeah. I like. I love that shit. Because I, I also get into like nonfiction productive cons- cons- consuming phase. Okay. Where it's like, yeah, let me let me read like 
you know, something adjacent to a self-help book yeah. or some like biography or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I, then I'm like, I should do fiction fiction. Cause fiction is like, it's m- much bigger. And I actually think it's not, sometimes I feel like I'm rotting my brain when I'm reading fiction, but I also think it's good for the right brain for you to like imagine and get, get lost in a great fiction book. You're getting, you're getting, I think it's actually good for you. You're getting your mind mixed with another mind. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. You're in someone's I, brain. Yeah. Um, it kind of made me like reading this. This is the first fiction of fiction book I've read in a while. And it kind of made me want to like dive into like Lord of the Rings or something again, where I have like a, you know, a thousand page book that I can just get lost in for like months. Cause I used to do that as a kid, but I don't anymore. I, uh, I did this with an anime about like Nordic warriors, Vikings taking over England and okay. Den- like from Denmark. Okay. Uh, and then the second season of it gets very introspective because it's someone who did a, did a lot of murdering mm-hmm. and is dealing with the murders. Total tone shift. But I watch all that and then I was like, because it was all about, basically about stoicism and there was like this fiction piece and then I was like, ooh, I want to read about that. So I think that's what fiction can do is get you, uh, introduce you to co- concepts in a, in a like a more interesting way. Yeah, that than, makes sense. Than like diving into Seneca yeah. or something. I read... Um, Who's the guy that does the Daily Stoic or whatever? Oh yeah, the Daily Stoic. Is that his name? That's his. What's YouTube his? Channel. What's his real? Oh, name? I don't know his real name. He's he's like written a bunch of books now, and I read his most. Ryan Holiday. Yeah, Ryan Holiday. I read his most recent one about like discipline, and I I really liked it. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah but I'm good. not. I don't do it. Sure. Well, you do. You're disciplined. Yeah, but he's like you know stoicism is about like never. And also, like, the discipline he holds himself to, it's like he never fucks up, I feel like. No. I think I'd be wrong. I don't think it's about yeah. not fucking up. I think it's about, like, setting a few, like, lines for yourself, and then if you cross it, like, reiterating the line that you crossed. Yeah. It's not about being inhuman. Yeah, that's true. But you're very disciplined in certain ways. Where are you not disciplined in? Um, like, eating and drinking, probably. Really? Yeah. Why Those are, like, my... Bad? Because it like messes with my with my life sometimes. You ran an Ironman. Like, what more did the <laughs> eating and drinking? Like, were you trying to run a second the next I, day? I feel like it's also like it, it coincides with the I don't want to waste time part of my mind because the only way I feel like I can relax is by indulging in vices. Right. And then I regret that. Okay. So it's this constant like battle of myself. So you're overindulging. Yeah. So I would say sometimes I do. Yeah. Is it more like? You're keeping yourself on the straight and narrow, straight and narrow, straight and narrow, straight and narrow, straight and narrow. And then it's like, let me indulge. And then yeah. you overindulge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're probably just going too hard on the straight and narrow. That's what I do. That's like I'm mm. all or nothing kind of guy. Yes. So what about you? What, my vices? Yeah. Um, have you heard of Salvia? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's five minutes in the morning. <laughs> I fight the demons. <laughs> Dude, imagine being a Salvia addict, which I mean, I'm sure there may there might be. <laughs> it's, it's, Wait, it's I've never... It's heard like of being, anyone doing it more than once. It's like being Puxatani Phil, right? The groundhog from ground, like, you know, the, the groundhog Totally, day. man. You either wake up and it's a great day <laughs> or you wake up and it's a terrible day. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, my vices are, I eat whatever I want to eat. Mm-hmm. I like food. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll, I'll smoke a bit of weed. Mm-hmm. I'll do a vape pen just for, and then consume media at mass, like a slug. Like YouTube or? I like YouTube. <laughs> I like YouTube. Do you like my tube? Well, I like YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of, uh, well, I watch anime for a bit. I get in phases. I've been in, I was in a Japan phase for a long time, still a little bit. Okay. I watch this guy Japan eat. He just okay. does YouTube shorts where he goes to something in Japan and he's just like, this is like a ramen pl- place near my house. I stopped playing RuneScape to go to it. It's pretty good. And I'm like, fuck yeah. That's awesome. Have you been? Yeah. Yeah. Have you been? Yeah. It's great. It's great. It is, you know what they call it? What? White Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Because so many white guys get obsessed with the <laughs> idea of Japan. <laughs> it's kind of true. Yeah, it is. There's a, you can definitely PewDiePie? like anyone listening. No. <laughs> yes. In a way, but I mean, he's he's accepted it more, yeah. you know. He's yeah, gone yeah. more into yeah. the understanding of it, but He just had a kid. Yeah. Are you For, scared? No, not yet, but I feel like like my friends are due in like some of our best friends are due in September and they like are setting up the crib and have the nursery all set up. And I feel like that's when it's going to get real. When you were 
trying. Did you say that? Yeah. What? Were you like, yeah, we're trying for a kid with your friends and family? No. Or did you just like spring it on them? We just dropped it on them. That's, I think because it did happen sooner than we were expecting. Okay. Like we weren't not trying, but we had just started trying. Right. So we, you know, it wasn't like we didn't even have time to tell them that we were. I, and also, actually, we told them we were ready. Like they knew that we were gonna like waste no time. Basically, <laughs> this is so funny because what we're basically saying is like <laughs> I know, they I knew know, we were I'm not gonna use condoms. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I'm gonna be raw dogging for the next like few months. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I got a lot of extras lying around. If y'all want them, we are not using them. <laughs> you know what's funny? So I did this uh, I did this backpacking trip last week with my parents. And the backpack that I used, I hadn't used since I went to Southeast Asia when I was 21 or 22 with my best friend. And we stayed in hostels. We backpacked for like eight months. And I used this backpack. And so I bring it on the trip and my mom is helping me pack. And she's like trying to figure out a place to put like my sleeping mat or my sleeping bag or something like that. And she, I open one of the pocket and there's like 30 condoms in there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because she's like, I was embarrassed, but then I was like, I mean, they're not used. So I wasn't getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> That's your first thought? Is that you're like, well, at least they're not used condoms. <laughs> no, but like, I'm like, my other backpack would have been a problem. <laughs> I just felt embarrassed because I was like, actually, I, got, I guess I wasn't having sex because these aren't, none of these uh, are used. There's just like too many in here, you know? You're almost, you're embarrassed the other way. You're like, it was actually a pack of a hundred. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, trust me, mom. I was fucking. I, all right. I, I went through a lot of them. <laughs> you don't see the bad ones. Uh, your family's fit. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Are you saying that in a British way? Like, like yeah, your yeah your, your family's mom. a fit bird. Your mom's a fit bird. <laughs> or early days. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean like like athletically fit. Yeah. That's that's. Yeah, they are. That's like what always inspired me. Yeah. To do it, to be an athlete, <laughs> which I was for twelve years and still am. Yes. You're still an athlete. Do you not? Still are. You're an athlete. <laughs> You're very much an. We're athlete. both athletes. Yeah, that's true. You've run an Ironman. I'm gonna run a marathon. Are we gonna do that together? Not together. Oh, because I'll be in front of you? Yeah. What do you, what do you mean? To right, get, right, Are right, you going right. to stay at my pace? I'm going for 545. What do we think? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wait, are you actually going to run it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, March 17th. Really? 2024, so yeah. So that was real? Yes. Let's do it. I've, I have not only signed up to run this marathon, I have signed up like 20 other people. Really? Yeah. I haven't even signed up yet. Well, I haven't actually signed up. Okay. <laughs> I've just talked about it publicly. Zach, sign me up right now. I, uh... I I've and been is not going to do it. Nut said he's going to run two marathons. Wait, I never saw this tweet because because <laughs> you're not on Twitter. Because I'm not on yeah. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, come to realize, no, Nut definitely will not. I don't think we'll be running two marathons. We should do this and like raise money for something. Nah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> for each other. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, for a new K truck. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> now we're thinking. Yeah, no, we should actually. It's not a bad idea. I uh, yeah, I I get. I don't believe in you know, fitness, diligence, like I just have a goal and I want to do the goal and mm -hmm. then I want to be done with it. So you're right now, you're walking 10,000 steps a day. It's a bet. With whom? American Pete. Okay. He's an American. His name's Pete. Mm. He lives in Japan. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and he is messaged he a, me. Is he a white guy? He's a white guy. As they do. Yeah. yeah. He's in Wakanda. Uh, and he messages me and he says, and it's a video and he goes, Ludwig. And he does this. And I'm like, that's too far. Yeah. He, yeah that yeah, is too far. That, yeah. Uh, he says, Ludwig, let's, Let's make a bet where we have to walk 70,000 steps a week. If either of us fail, we get the uh, the winner a ticket to our country. So I'd give him a ticket to America. Gotcha. He'd get me a ticket to Japan. Okay. Why 70,000? Because it's 10K a day. Oh, gotcha. But okay. you don't have yeah, to yeah. do, like sense. if you have a 5K day, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he has a huge advantage. What? He's in Japan, the most walkable city on earth. That's true, yeah. And so- There is a lot of space here though. Yeah, for a car to cover, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. For... Have you thought about going to work with public transportation? Yeah. Look it up. Yeah. I bet it's bad. Yeah. Uh, and so walking here is very intentional. Like I have a treadmill I use some days because like I just don't have a reason to walk and there's nowhere to walk outside. Uh, and he's like, oh yeah, I got lunch and I'm at 3,000 already. And it's like, <laughs> I got dinner, I'm at 20,000. And so he'll post his weeklies, like we have a group chat and he'll be at like, yeah, I average 14K a day. 
And me, it's like... And uh, he's not even like changing his lifestyle. No. It's just like he already was doing that. Yeah, he's like, there was a monsoon, so I cut back a bit. <laughs> and then me, it'll be like the final day, because Saturday is the final day of the week. And I'll, I'll be like, yeah, I had to do 29,000 steps today. <laughs> <laughs> I basically spent all day walking. We're taking a quick break to thank another sponsor, Manscaped. Fresh ball fall is upon us, and you need to be in the festive spirit. Light a candle, get some pumpkin spice, and make sure your balls look nice mm-hmm. with the sponsors of today's show, Manscaped. Nature may clear the leaves of their trees, but you'll need Manscaped's help to get you ready for sweater weather. Get your pants puppies prepared for cuffing season with a trim as refreshing as a fall breeze by going to manscaped.com and using code chill for 20% off plus free shipping. Fellas, we've all clipped our pumpkins on at least one occasion, right? Oh, yeah. But now Manscaped has me trimming with confidence. I use Manscaped. I really do. And it's never, ever nicked me ever. And uh, it's also really efficient. I used to use other trimmers for like my chest and stuff. And it just would take forever because I have thick hair. Oh, you're a thick guy? Manscaped is... It's like one line. I can just shave a line through my chest like this. Oh, that's perfect. It's beautiful. Smooth ride. Uh, it actually makes manscaping like enjoyable for me, mm-hmm. to be honest. By now, you've probably heard of them, but it's time to join the 9 million men worldwide using, using Manscaped and get the kit that covers it all, the Performance Package 4.0. It starts with the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer with advanced skin-safe technology that reduces nicks and cuts to make raking the leaves a lot less painful. Plus, the lawnmower is a technical masterpiece. It has a 7,000 RPM motor, a multifunction on-slash-off switch that can engage a travel lock, and a built-in 4,000K LED spotlight to help you see parts of your body you haven't looked at in years. Do you even want to see those? That remains to be seen. <laughs> when, when you see them. You're opening a dangerous box. <laughs> yeah, 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 Pandora's box. <laughs> Pandora's box. <laughs> Shave Pandora. You can box. literally see Pandora's box. <laughs> the performance package 4.0 caps it off with two free gifts the Manscaped boxers and the Shed travel bag. That's one to hold your Manscaped goodies and one to hold your man goodies. Nice. Mm-hmm. Bring in the fall right and get 20% off and free shipping with code chill at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code chill. As the leaves fall, make sure you have it all with Manscaped. How long does it take to run 10,000 steps? And like, what does that equate to in miles? You do about 10K uh, every, you do about, you do about 6K an hour. So if you walked okay. just straight up, it'd take you a little under two hours to walk. I mean, varies per person. Running doesn't help too much. Okay. Because you're taking longer steps. So it's like a little better, but not as much better as you would think. Uh, so you just go on the treadmill and just... Yeah, I walk to, I try to walk to get food. I try to have purpose. But yeah. yeah, sometimes I'll just be on the treadmill for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And uh, I've been doing it for four months. How do you feel? Um, I, don't, I don't know. What you don't like good? notice a difference in how you feel or look? Because eh. I feel like that's, you're like covering a decent amount of miles a week. It's like, it's I think- Five I'm, miles a day. Or five miles is 10,000 steps. A, a mile? Yeah, so eh, that's yeah, 35 probably. miles a week? That's fucking, that's a lot. People, people 30, like can't week, yeah. run that. Yeah, I, that's why I feel like I can do the marathon. Anyway, this is where I'm going with that. You definitely walk it. <laughs> and it, the, I think the rule for a marathon is you have to have a maximum time of six hours, 30 minutes, something like that. That's the cutoff? Yes. Okay. And then they're like, we're closing down. If you haven't made it yet, sorry. And uh, and that's an average of 15 minutes a mile. 15 minutes a mile is like four miles an hour. It's walking pace. There you go. So I that's why I feel like I can do it. Yeah. Um. So I haven't even trained at all. <laughs> Well, it's in March, so yeah, I've ran, I've ran a couple like, times. Have you? I yeah, I run downhill and then I I uh, like take a bird scooter uphill because <laughs> I don't do the uphill part, so those suck. You uh, guys should do a run together. Cody runs. Nah, that's all right. Time. We should. Ah, <laughs> we could run downhill. I don't want to. There's do There's a little it hill by my you. house. We could run down. You're gonna be faster. Uh, honestly, I just like to run with people. I don't mind running. Really? Slow. Yeah. I feel like I've always hated that. Why? Give me my AirPods, leave me alone, and let me huff and puff I and d- hate my life I, at my own pace. I mean, I do like doing that, but also, like, I spend so much fucking time driving now that, like, I'm out of podcasts constantly. So even when I go for a run, I'm like, I have, I'm out of music, I'm out of podcasts, so I want to, like, talk to someone. You talk while running? Yeah. Oh, I'd be sometimes. so mad at you. Dude, it makes the time go by so fast. I'm fighting for my life. That makes the time go by fast. 
We could talk about K trucks. I would I would be like huffing and puffing and sad that you stopped talking because that means it's my turn to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I would listen. I'd be a great listener. <laughs> so if we we can run together, I'll listen. You talk. And the I'll whole just time. like do a monologue. Yeah, you'll be like. Yeah, anyway, so I just don't watch any media whatsoever. And then I just be like, oh, it's so great. It's so great. Do you ever think we're going to fall so off? I'm thinking about doing a podcast with Nut. <laughs> what do you think about that? Stay silent if you agree. <laughs> I want to stream. Is it cool if I do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about streaming on YouTube. <laughs> um, how much do you work? And tell me about off-brand. What's going on with off-brand? What are the challenges that you're facing right now? Um, biggest challenge is making money in terms of like amen brother <laughs> shoot <laughs> it, it's uh it's actually finding out where to put the bread <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> uh no i think the biggest issue is bad well <laughs> we all got our sinkers uh we have two problems because first question is how much you work and it's usually i think how much i'm responsible to work because I, I don't work because i want to now i just work because i feel like i have to mm -hmm. which i still enjoy it's still fine it's still a good job but i just have uh 18 employees right which is like a lot. Yeah. And if I were to stop working, they'll lose their job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like bad. Yeah. So I just work to make sure that we have food food on the table for everyone. No one loses their job. Uh, and off-brand, the goal of it is a production company I made. Does shows for people. The goal is to like make products with other YouTubers and basically not be reliant on me being famous for the short period of time I will be famous until I'm no longer famous and be more uh, versatile in being able to create something for anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the hope is to build that up so that anyone who works for me can just work for off brand and that can be self sustainable even if I set a slur on this podcast tomorrow. <laughs> you could say one right now. It, but well, off brand's not there yet. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll come back when it's there. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll be like, this we'll is. We'll do a slur reveal. <laughs> yes. This is. <laughs> Three. It's, it's how two. you'll know that I'm being... <laughs> yeah. Confetti. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to say the worst one. <laughs> Which is, by the way, what? Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> to be <me>, all bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the right answer, right? Um, so that's, that's what off brand is. Uh, and the hardest part is. Um, raising money to Are have you? enough runway in a Did way. You? No, no, we have okay. not raised yet. It's, I've just funded it personally, mm -hmm. but like it takes a lot to fund a startup mm -hmm. and I don't fuck with VCs at all. Mm -hmm. I really hate them. Yeah. Do you hate them? Why do you hate them? Cause I just, have you been on a meeting with VCs? Yes. They're miserable. Yeah. It's, it's boomers who you have to explain the thing to and then convince that you're going to 1000 X their return. Yeah. The big. That's yeah, it. Sorry. Yeah. Well, so you got to you got to convince some boomer that you're going to one thousand extra return, so it can be a scalable billion dollar business, and that's the only reason they take a bet on you. And then ninety five percent of it fails, and they like take control of whatever they can. I think that's the biggest problem is that then you have a boss, basically. Yeah. A boss. Even if you own the company, who's out of touch. You're answering to someone, and you have like a fiducial, fiducial responsibility to fiduciary fiduciary yeah i thought you were talking fiducial. about like feudal like feudal lords. Fidu fidush fiducial you, what's the right fiduciary no no but then what's the ill form of that oh uh fiduciary no Fidu i think i had it right it's a fiducier and a fiduci a fiduci fidu <laughs> fiduciess <laughs> depends who's doing the fiducing yeah fidush fiducial fiducial Fiducial. Can you hit the, you have the a sound response? one? You have a... F yeah, yeah. Hit the sound. Let's, Fiducial. Let's... We were... We were all, all way wrong. off. I have an English degree. <laughs> you, uh, do you really? Yeah, wow, yeah. Wow, you should have known that. From Harvard. Fiducial responsibility... Yes. ...to give them a return on their investment. Yes, which is stupid. A company's <laughs> yeah, sole purpose should not be to get like a higher return for the person who invested in it, you know? Yeah. You know it's hype? I guess I mean, this is entirely... What? You know it's hype? What? Worker co-ops. What's a worker co-op? It's where the fiducial responsibility is fiducial. to the workers. Fidu fiducial responsibility yeah. is just to the workers' livelihoods. Which... Wait, you're talking about a lifestyle business. No. That's what that is. A lifestyle? What is this? Like a, just a business that generates profit, that you pay out people's salaries, everyone gets paid well. And the owner of the company gets paid well, and you maintain that, and you don't try to grow faster than your, uh, you know, growing revenue or anything like that. Is that what you're talking about? It's similar to that, but that hinges on the owner of it, whoever owns it, because they, you know, had enough money to invest in it, being like a 
good person and living long enough and setting it up to be that way. Okay. Because they could switch. Yeah. Right. If, yeah. They, if they wanted, or they could sell it. Okay. And then the person who then owns it might not feel the same. So then, what's a co-op? It is where literally the workers would own what the company is. Like I see. Rather than having a VC invest, yeah, the workers would own it, and maybe you get money from the workers by garnishing their wages to like raise, and then they so you all would have not pay them, and then no, you still pay them. Okay, <laughs> you can still have a normal company structure. Someone's paid higher, someone's paid lower. You can have like 10x for the CEO, 20x, and then someone at the bottom. But it wouldn't be like a typical structure where you have a set of directors who just makes all the decisions and hires and fires at will. It'd be like a group where everyone has a vote on what happens. Like a democracy. Yes. It happens a lot with small time food chains, like okay. pizza stores, farmers. A lot of farmers do this. Hmm. Like uh, Welch's Grape, I think. Ocean Spray hmm. is a worker co-op. Um, Do the employees own shares? Yeah. You can have shares. And usually when someone's hired, they buy in to get shares of it, which is separate from their voting power. Because right now... In traditional companies, voting power is equivalent to your shares. Mm. So whoever has the most shares has the most voting power. This would be like voting power is equal, but shares are not equal. So if someone's working harder, they have more shares and they can get paid more, but they won't have more power. So is that how you're running off brand? That's a goal of mine, but not at the moment, no. You're like, I own it. Yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> but that's my goal. But I think I have to... Uh, the issue I want to get there, but fuck, fuck no, not right now. Well, the biggest problem with worker co-ops is making money. Yeah. Because how do you make money if you won't let people who invest have any control? Who's willing to put money into that? Yeah. And the answer is not many people. Yeah. Like one of the biggest- So you have to make money, not raise money, is what you're saying. Well, you have to raise money to make money, right? Like you have to have- Not necessarily. You can bootstrap. True. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can do it very like cutthroat, which is kind of what we're currently doing. Uh, or like, you know, like skinnier budgets and whatever. Um, and like, I'm able to fund it cause, cause <laughs> thanks Neil. Uh, appreciate that YouTube deal. Um, <laughs> but that's also like basically a subsidy for me, which who knows how long it'll last. So I, I'm looking to do, I have some goals of a more sustainable way to raise that doesn't cede control to a VC. Cause I would hate that. So what is your, what is your daily like routine look like? I wake up 10. Yep. Uh, really? That's when I do my salvia fight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then <laughs> first things first. It's like yeah, nine, salvia. Nine thirty ten. When do you wake up? Five thirty <laughs> or six. What do you listen to? Like three hours of Mark, Wal Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> like positive Old affirmations. Old shower. Yeah. Yeah. No, I listen to Green Lights. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, I lied when I said I don't listen to audiobooks. <laughs> it's just because I listen to that every morning. Green light. All right. All Green right. Light. Yeah. <laughs> I uh I wake no, up. No, I, I, it's not like a morning routine thing. It's just that's when I that's when I thrive. Sure. And you go on a morning run or something. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, normally I just sit on my computer for an hour, and like honestly, like a lot of the times, like it's like weird that work for us is like watching YouTube and just like keeping up on mm -hmm. what's happening online. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, like my morning time is like e email or just like watching YouTube or yeah. whatever, and then I'll go on a run. I see. But sorry, what was yours? Wake up 9.30, usually like 10 to 12, I do meetings. And then I try to work out like around noonish. Uh, I'm going for the thousand pound club. Okay. Which can close. What's that? It's where you add up your deadlift, squat, and bench. Oh, nice. To be a thousand pounds total. Okay. Uh, and then uh, eat food, hang out with my girlfriend, get a little lunch, uh, stream three, four hours. At what time? Usually like three to seven, four okay. to eight, okay, five to nine, something okay. in there. It's variable. It's never okay. consistent. And then uh, get off, do a couple messages, emails as it were, uh, and then watch some stuff, go to bed, call it a day. So I feel like, so is everything that you post cut out of the stuff that you're just streaming five to eight? Most of it. Because yeah. like the, I watched the fast food challenge thing that you did. The, what was it called? The, Doug Doug Challenge. Yeah, yeah. I, first of all, I want to do that. Oh, you don't. And it was it rough? It, oh, it's bad for the core. Can you explain it, the challenge for anyone listening? The Doug Doug Food Challenge comes from a creator, Doug Doug. Great creator. Mm -hmm. Worth checking out. Uh, and the premise of it is you have to go through 10 drive throughs with a car of four people in order whatever the person in front of you in the drive through ordered. 
and then consume the entirety of it. Oh, but you have four people to do it. Yes. Ah, oh, I thought you had to do it by yourself. No, that would be impossible. Okay, got it. Uh, and then over you know the course of it, there's a couple other stipulations. Like you have to go to a KFC because it can be very punishing. Mm-hmm. You can only go to one drink place. You can't game it. Yeah. And you can only repeat a place like like t- uh, once. Okay. So there's there's a few other rules. But basically, that's the idea. That sounds so fun, dude. That sounds so fun. Over the course of five and a half hours, we went to 10 places. 11, actually, because we wanted to break the record. Because the record was 10. Okay. And we went to 11 places, and it was 17,000 calories. Total. Total. Okay. Across four people. Which is what per person? 4,250. But... It wasn't even because, you know, some people eat more, some people eat less. That crazy, though. I did. I see people do the 10,000 calorie challenge and they want to kill themselves. Oftentimes. Yeah, but if they can do that, I feel like I could do 4,000. I feel like I've done that. I probably do that like once a week anyways. It is definitely doable in the course of a day. Like everyone's eating probably like a 4K calorie day. But you're saying five to six hours is it, tough. It, I think in the time span, one, in the environment, like in a car yeah. is tougher. And then the food you're eating is like... You get to the line and it's like restaurant six and you're at Taco Bell and you get a, a fucking large soda and you're like, oh, drink water, please. Because yeah, yeah. it's your ninth soda. Can you game it where you like sit in the parking lot until you see like a small woman? No. <laughs> Drive through and you're like, oh, let's go behind her. You got to try to be honest. Right. Because because the, the luck is part of it. Like I, I saw a couple people try it. Restaurant four, they would hit like, oh, they got two KFC buckets. It's 9,000 calories. <laughs> and it's like, Oh, we're, we're not doing this. <laughs> we're going to go home. <laughs> this is stupid. But then sometimes we we went to uh, Krispy Kreme. They ordered one donut. Perfect. And then... He, so that's actually kind of annoying. You just split one Krispy Kreme with four dudes. I'd be like, no, fuck you don't, off. You don't split... Oh, I think part of the strategy is you don't perfectly split everything. Oh, so you like distribute. You define roles. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, it's the Ford method. Yeah, yeah, right. You know? And yeah, so yeah, yeah, we had yeah. a soda It's a little guy. assembly line. Of, yeah. Yeah. We had a soda guy. You're the donut guy. Boy. Donut boy. Little donut boy. Like, you why the fuck am I the donut guy? Because <laughs> you look like you eat a lot of donuts. Eat, eat, eat donut boy. Yeah, You're yeah, hungry. Come you look on. hungry. Oink, oink. Uh, <laughs> who would your crew be? Probably S- Sam, the guy that you were dressed as yeah. earlier. Yeah, I was just um, at Sam. Maybe. I don't know. It depends. I mean, I have. I would go with any of my pals, and I feel like we could, we could crush it. I don't think you'd beat my record. I don't think I would either. Oh. I was hoping to set up a challenge. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm done with beefs. Okay, I'm done yeah. with challenges. You just okay. You accept it's that. It's collaborative. I also think it's a problem to set it up in a challenge format. I think the goal should just be ten. If you do ten, you've done it. It's like a marathon. It's not like you have to run further than someone. Yes. You yes. Just do. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I worry that it gets popular and then it is like a Fox News piece on the American challenge that teenagers <laughs> like are doing. People jumping off the boat, yes. dying. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, like teenagers around the country are eating as many calories yeah. as they can. And dropping dead. <laughs> All yeah. thanks, thanks to, to Ludwig. Ludwig. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Has this liberal challenge gone too far? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like when you do something like that, are you pre-planning that? How much are you thinking about your content that you're filming each week? Because I find... Like I, I try to do so much that I'm constantly like, there's no like time where I'm relaxed because I'm like, oh, I could be filming for this channel or this or this. Do you pre-plan out what you're doing every week and then you, no? You by don't the seem day, stressed by this at all. I think I try to base my entire life around minimizing stress. Yeah, okay. I don't like being stressed. Right. It's like the worst thing yeah. in the world. Yeah, true. And sometimes I'm stressed because like a deadline comes up and something else falls through. But most of the time it's like, you know, I worry about the problems. I try to do good for future Ludwig. You know, tr- present Ludwig tries to do laundry on time so future Ludwig's happier. Mm-hmm. But I don't I don't stress about it, you know? Like, I'll wake up. My goal is to think of what I do on stream. And then what I do on stream is hopefully turn into a YouTube video. So it has to be like a thought out thing. Like, I, hey, I'm going to go live and do this. And I just go live and wing it. Hope it works out. But that's how you think about it, though, is like, I'm going to stream. Mm-hmm. That's a thing. But then I also want to be able to cut something out of this. Yes. So I have to be conscious of that, too. The stream is built around a segment that will become a YouTube video. But then when you go out and do something, are you streaming that? Well, I, I That was live streamed, yeah. I had a, it was. I had an, uh, like an IRL backpack you uh, can bring around okay. with you. Uh, I don't do that often. Mostly it's at my setup, my desk. Uh, but yeah, if I go live at my desktop, I try to think of a segment that can become <clears> a YouTube video and it knocks out two bird, one stone. Yeah. And I have a second channel, but it's like, eh, I do what I want. Mm-hmm. I don't need to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't rely on that income. Okay. Is that Mogul Mail? It's Mogul Mail. 
it's my commentary channel. What about Ludwin? I just have a guy in Brazil. <laughs> Who His what? Name's cuts Ian. Like, short clips. He cuts. He cuts out clips. He cuts out. If Mr. Beast uploads a video, I'll watch it on stream, and that's when he feasts. Okay. Because Mr. Beast is cool with me re-uploading it ethically. Uh, Ludwig, I think we squashed it. Yeah. Could could I offer One a more? friendly wager? Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cody, Please. we talked in preparation for you coming in today. Oh, I yeah, I like this. I couldn't help but notice that The Yard and Insanely Chill have almost identical amount of subscribers. We're both around 341, 342K. Mm. Okay. Now, keep keep in mind, though. A lot of ours are like legacy, like <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, a lot of dead subscribers. <laughs> a lot of people not like dead in real in. life. It just, did you retrofit the, the channel? Hmm? Did you retrofit the channel? We like abandoned it for years, and then like I see. Yeah, my back, dad was so. like one of the first subs back when he was in college. So, so this might be a little bit unfair. Dormant. I think yeah. you're in the league. Sure. But, okay. So we were thinking it could be fun if we did some sort of race to 360, 375, 400. You guys name the number. And I was thinking the wager could be that whoever loses has to have a bust of the other person on the shelf or in the background of their podcast. A bust of you, our busts. Yeah. Cody's going to come bust on the yard set. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on your oh. chair. Oh. I was talking about like bus. And you have to oh, the, that kind of bus. And okay. you have to do yeah. the whole episode <laughs> just in the bus. <laughs> um, a subscriber goal. I, I like the idea. Mm-hmm. I, w- w- subscribers are a dead metric. <laughs> we know this. Okay. You, Mr. Analytics. Jesus Christ. It's a vanity it's number. It's a dead metric. It's a vanity number to feel good about yourselves. <laughs> Let's look up Drew does right now. He's got 75,000 subscribers and he gets 8 million views of video. You know? So. It's a good point. Okay. It, so what is the metric then? That's what I'm trying to think of. Views on per episode. <laughs> no, let's not do that. No, 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 no. Okay, I don't like podcast ABD. is more popular and more successful and makes more money. Wins. Here's, How here's, about that? No, here's what we do. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. We do whichever. We'll have. We'll have a charity off. Okay, a give off. Whichever podcast is able to raise more, and it can be within the confines of the marathon thing. Okay, and you could tie it into the pod. Okay. And and the loser would have to have the bus on the set. Okay, it is a whole good. I've also said the charity word. So you, if you back out, oh, it looks so bad. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I was the one who initially because I care this, by the more way. than Cody about. No, by guys. the way, I was. This was my idea that he's to stealing. Me it's about giving, and making it look like his. To me, it's about giving. You know, <laughs> right? This guy drives Ferraris. I just care about giving. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually don't care who invented it. I just care that we raise enough money. Yeah. You know? Uh, I don't. I care about who invented it. We should all care about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can do we can do a yard versus uh, insanely chill charity off, mm-hmm. and it ends charity off. That's good. March thirtieth because it won't start for a while, mm-hmm. and then whoever raises the most has to have the loser take a bust. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's put the YouTube charity widget on the. Yeah, because then I'll show you exactly how much. Yeah, and we do it for the month of March or something. Yep. Okay. We gotta yeah. we gotta pick a couple charities. Yeah. Uh I have the off brand foundation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a co op. <laughs> it supports a, a workers co op. <laughs> uh which I don't know. Like I have no affiliation with them. <laughs> uh yeah, I'm done. That'll be fun. All right. Thanks for joining us, Ludwig. Dude, what that the hell? Fantastic. It literally has all my accolades and all you said was decorated. Cause it encompassed them into one neatly packaged thing. Same, same. If I said, did you want me to say it nominated for streamies? Yeah. <laughs> That's all nominated for streamies. Yeah, the the streamies. Which one? This, which this which will come out a week podcast. after. Just you got a podcast. You are nominated for podcast. It was, I was nominated for best podcast, but you have a of, podcast. It's the yard, but instead of nominating the yard podcast, they said like. The yard nominated and just put a picture of me on it, <laughs> and everyone else on the podcast is like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, we're on it too. <laughs> well, best of luck. I hope you win that. No, you don't. I do actually. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I was hoping for fresh and fit, but <laughs> we all have our podcast that we like. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now off brand definitely has to take off. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that's gonna get. <laughs> uh, well, I'll see you on our run. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for joining me. I'm Thanks happy, for watching, I'm folks. Happy to squash. And we squashed it. Friends. Acquaintances. Acquaintances. <laughs> <laughs>